So viruses have been causing a lot of problems recently. A bunch of people contracting this new and little known illness that jumped over from an animal and getting sick and spreading it everywhere. I'm talking, of course, about monkeypox. But viruses can cause a lot of problems if one manages to get its grimy little protein spikes or tail fibers into one of your cell membranes. You might end up with a case of the sniffles or full-blown AIDS. And antibiotics don't work on them because antibiotics really only eliminate bacteria. And look at the word itself, antibiotic. Anti, opposed to, biotic, of life. Opposed to, life. And viruses may not even be alive. They can't even reproduce on their own. Even archaea can reproduce on their own, and they don't even have a nucleus. Can't get much simpler than that, but viruses aren't even really cells. They're basically just scraps of genetic code that managed to find itself a little protomer cardboard box to live in. Nigel Brown of the University of Edinburgh sometimes calls them gift-wrapped nucleic acids, only the gift wrapping is called a capsid and it's made of proteins instead of shiny paper. And some viruses have an extra layer of protection, it's made of greasy fat, and it's kind of like a tent instead of a cardboard box. But even the envelope is ridiculously fragile and falls apart at the slightest touch of soap, so if you wash your hands, you're already ahead of the game. But not only are these things not even alive, the lipoprotein for that envelope layer is usually just stolen from another cell. It's a similar material to the stuff that makes up our cell membranes, which is why viruses with an envelope are usually the ones that infect animal cells. Stuff like herpes, HIV, influenza, and yes, the coronavirus. Those envelopes, and honestly viruses in general, don't do very well with the cell walls that plant cells have. So if they want to infect a plant, they're going to have to hitch a ride with an animal that's eating the plant. But plants have one important disadvantage. They can't wash their hands because they don't have any. Alright, I hear you. But how can something that's not even alive cause so many problems? And to that I say... Actually, a lot of things that aren't alive cause big problems. Radiation, meteors, volcanoes, zombies. Even water will kill you if it ends up in the wrong place. And it's probably not alive. There's some debate about it, which mostly boils down to the fact that they can't reproduce on their own, they can't make their own amino acids or proteins or anything, so they have to find a cell that can. The journey begins with as little as one viral particle, or virion, entering a cell. Some viruses go all the way into the cell, and some just fuse right to the cell membrane, like when a male anglerfish finds a female he likes and then bites her and fuses to her body forever. Romantic. Only instead of a presumably happy fish marriage, the virus starts hijacking the cell's inner machinery for its own purposes. Imagine a cell like a factory. The factory gets supplies delivered to build the products and then has workers to assemble them. But a virus is the guy who doesn't want to work his way up to be the boss. He decides he's just gonna head into the boss's office and start doing the job. So he sneaks around the building until he finds the boss's office. Sometimes he leaves a tasty snack out to trick the boss into opening the door. Then it sneaks into the boss's office and steals the stationery so it can start sending out whatever memos it wants. Memos like, make more copies of me, and blow up the factory so the copies of me can go take over the world. The factory workers were hired for their efficiency and not their critical thinking skills, so they just go with whatever the memos say. So the factory starts churning out the viruses, and then they go and infect other factories. Now the people who built the factory did hire security, that's the immune system. Some viruses are smart enough to hide when the security guard walks by. But when security does notice this random virus just chilling with the boss's stationery and sending out memos, they're like, Hey, you don't even go here! And they charge in and put handcuffs on the virus and cover it in antibodies like that one scene in The Incredibles. And then, well, after that the cells usually engulf the pathogen and eat it, so unless we're willing to add cannibalistic security guards, our metaphor kind of falls apart there. But this is one reason vaccines are so effective against viruses. The vaccine is basically a big sign in the security office that says, Watch out for this person! They are bad! So when they're doing their rounds, they can hopefully recognize the virus before it even gets in and starts causing problems. Or at least get on it much faster before much damage can be caused. We are clear on the fact that vaccines don't cause autism, right? Right? But are all viruses bad? All right, yeah, we can't judge a cell by its membrane. Some viruses are actually part of your microbiome, the crew of little organisms that works with your body to keep everything healthy. We all know we have bacteria in different parts of our body to help digest things and break things down. 
but viruses have developed alongside bacteria for probably as long as bacteria has been around. Like how Batman and the Joker were twins and grew up alongside each other in a series of escalating prank wars until ultimately the Joker went too far and killed their parents because Batman was their favorite. But they can't kill each other because they're intertwined in this cosmic dance of destiny that forces them to outsmart each other at every turn. And also, they still secretly care about each other and can't bear to kill their twin. Or something like that. I've never seen Batman. Anyway, viruses are an important part of the human microbiome. Most of the ones on your body are called bacteriophages. Or just phages, if you're one of the cool microbiologists which work both with and against the bacteria in your body, especially in your intestines. In fact, the assortment of viruses in your microbiome are actually highly specific to you. It's like that shampoo you can buy that's supposed to be specifically formulated for your hair, but instead it's billions of tiny organisms inside your intestines. You have your own personal community of microorganisms in your blood, your gut, on your skin, in your mouth, pretty much everywhere. Some of them get along, some of them don't, but they're all a part of you. Aww. In addition to naturally helping our bodily processes, some viruses can actually get rid of the bad germs that make us sick. As early as the 20th century, viruses were being used to fight off bad bacteria. But when antibiotics came around, a lot of people were like, don't need this anymore. Now we have bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics, like MDR-TB and MRSA. So now we're trying that virus thing again, and it can actually be really helpful. Because not only do viruses get rid of bacteria differently than antibiotics do, they can be engineered to target specific bacteria without getting rid of the good bacteria in our bodies. Some viruses can even be modified to target cancer cells without making the person sick. So not all viruses deserve the hate. Whether helpful or hurtful, viruses have had a huge impact on human history, and the history of living things in general. So help your body train its security guards by staying up to date on your vaccinations. And next time you get a cold, try not to think about how your cells are probably being invaded by a bunch of abiotic DNA hackers. Thank you so much for watching. This is a new thing I'm trying on my channel. I would love to do more of these about science and history or whatever you guys want to hear about. So let me know in the comments below if there's something you'd like to learn about. And of course, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and follow me on my social media. I also stream on Twitch. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, whatever time it is for you. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon.